Started in 2016, Transonic Transportation LLC is a US-based automated tube transport form working towards implementation of infrastructure for everyday freight travel. Automated Tube Transport ATT is a modified form of Hyperloop concept and the pod would reach a target speed of 600 miles an hour in a high strength 10 foot diameter tube that is partially evacuated in a 96% reduced air pressure closed loop system. Currently, Transonic Transportation is in research and development stage and are seeking funding. Hi Eliza and Luke, welcome to In the Hyperloop. Hi. Hi, thanks uh, for having us. You guys just got off the airplane mm -hmm. and came immediately here because yeah. <laughs> you're you're traveling on tonight. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, tell me a little bit about um, Transonic mm -hmm. Transport mm -hmm. um, and your roles and what you guys do there. Okay, um, well Transonic Transportation is our Hyperloop company. Obviously, we're starting in Texas, and we're doing um, freight Hyperloop, mm -hmm. which is pretty unique. Most people are starting out with commuter. Yeah. Um, as for our team, I am the chief development officer, and so what I do is I work with both government officials, um, angel investors, VCs, and really try to establish a relationship, maintain it, and bring them on board to what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And I'm the chief networking officer. What I do is I'm a lot of the communications with Eliza. Eliza mm -hmm. and I work hand in hand. But mm -hmm we like to do is, we like to be the friends of the company. We like yeah. to uh, go out and make sure that mm -hmm. people know who we are, that we're friendly. We also want to teach them. We want mm -hmm. them to know that it's not all confusing gibberish. Yeah. It is stuff that everybody can understand. Yeah, yeah. And we're fortunate that we balance each other really well. We do. Um, so it's kind of why our titles are so synonymous with each other, because everything we do, we're kind of like yin and yang. Cool. Um, so how did, how did you uh, learn about the Hyperloop? Mm -hmm. How did you become, <laughs> you know, fit into these roles? So, if you don't mind, I'll start with this one. Yeah, you Just can. chronologically, yeah. uh, what happened was, so our CEO, Josh, mm -hmm. super awesome guy, he's a genius. Mm -hmm. Josh, uh, <laughs> he's a genius, but the, uh, he is the dream maker. He's the brains behind all the, the whole mm -hmm. operation. And one day I saw a news article about him and I gave him a call. Um, and I was like, I have to do something with the company. Oh, cool. Even mm -hmm. just, you name it, I mm -hmm. want to do it for you. I want to be a part of this. Mm -hmm. So many months later, I wound up becoming more of an asset than I thought I could actually mm -hmm. be. Um, and we started doing some local, uh, more local government sort of stuff, campaigning mm -hmm. um, with within the city of San Antonio, which is where Eliza and I are from. Mm -hmm. And that's where yeah. Eliza comes in. Yeah, and that's a great segue. So. Mm -hmm. um, before I did join Transonic, I was really involved yeah. with the political scene in San Antonio, yeah. and I like to think I still am. Um, so at the time, I was working on Ron Nuremberg's campaign, who is now our mayor, which a mm -hmm. uh, little San Antonio shout out. We're really happy that he's our mayor. And uh, Josh volunteered on the campaign, um, and just through my campaign duties, I was you know training and working with the volunteers, and that's how Josh and I initially met. If you I feel like this is something common in Hyperloop. People who work in it are really passionate about it, so that's something Josh very upfront shared with me. Mm -hmm. And um, I had I had paid attention to the technology, but I was just more drawn to the entrepreneurship side mm -hmm. of it. And so I mm -hmm. told him that was something I'd be interested in. And after yeah. the campaign ended, he gave me a call and brought me on board. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, and that's actually when her and I met up. Yeah. Uh, Josh mm -hmm. gave me a call. He said, mm -hmm. you have to meet this girl. <laughs> She's awesome. And I was like, okay, fine. Some new girl. Yeah. I go over, <laughs> I meet girl. her, and I realize uh, we really are yin and yang. And that's why yeah. we have meshed so well. And that's mm -hmm. why we're doing all of this together now. Because mm -hmm. Josh, he can be the brains. He can do all this cool engineering stuff. Mm -hmm. Eliza and I, we get to do everything else. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, when it comes mm -hmm. to a startup, you really have to... Um, you know, pull a lot of weight and work yeah. together as a team, mm -hmm. and it's it's sometimes really stressful. So it's good to have good dynamics. Yeah, right. we've in been so fortunate. We've been able to hit it at a lot of different angles. Mm -hmm. So, as your role as chief development officer mm -hmm. and chief networking officer, mm -hmm. um, what are some of the challenges you are starting to face? Um, that's a really good question. So it's really interesting because the challenges are much more cultural. Mm. Um, in Texas, something we've ran into is a lot of investors um, and more just individuals in general 
operate from the stance of self-preservation. And so the idea of taking a risk on a technology that has yet to be like burst into the world, um, we've been receiving a lot of, not even negative feedback, just almost like just running to a wall every single right. time. And I mean, you can imagine people don't want to spend money on something they don't know works. Yeah. Right? And they want to see it, they want to hear it, they want to smell it mm-hmm. yeah. before they can throw money. They want to kick their, their cowboy boot. Exactly. Yeah. It and <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And yeah. Yeah. And I think there's, it. yeah. it's something that's very understandable, yeah. um, and that is, you know, when you're talking about your team, something, it's not a very tangible quality, you mm-hmm. can't really put it down, but just that, that innate affinity for entrepreneurship, mm. um, I feel like that's something really special, and it's so, it's hard to communicate that to people whom um, they maybe yeah. don't feel it themselves, or it's just not part of their vocabulary or in their community or something like Interesting. that. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so we've hit on some of the challenges. What are some of the things that you enjoy or love mm-hmm. about working in either hyper community oh. or startup or in your role? In There's the a lot. Yeah. Uh, one of the greatest things is this is such an innovative thing. We are at the forefront of this awesome new technology. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's one of those things where I finally feel like I get to teach somebody about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. uh, I mean, when... When you're growing up, you are the student and everybody else is the teacher. And mm-hmm. I'm finally like, well, let me tell you about something that you don't know about yet. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but it, also on top of that, we are working on something that is going to benefit everyone. I feel very similar where it's not so much necessarily teaching. Um, so, for example, I was a philosophy major mm-hmm. when I went to school. And you learn so much about, you know, the fabric of our reality and you study, you know, what does it mean to be good? And so in the sense, it's like you are creating the rules about being involved with this company. It's like we're finally empowered to make the rules for what we deem is not only like a successful financially, but successful and it's a kind company that gives back and that, you know, we can use that to support our communities. We can use that to make our state better. But also if we are able to really make this happen and as co-founders you know receive the financial compensation for all the work we put into it it puts mm-hmm. us both in a position that we can put that money towards our values and really right. ensure that you know the what people our, that we've always been concerned with the the movements we've always been concerned with we can actually ensure that they have mm-hmm. the resources they need to be successful and that's like what I fantasize about. Oh yeah, I no, I mean like working. one of our transparent yeah. parts about our company is how much we want to be able to work with a community, yeah. not for mm-hmm. a community. Mm-hmm. We want to make sure that we are benefiting everyone. Mm-hmm. And we go to many strengths. Mm-hmm. I mean, even small little side projects that we have to take care of before, we want to make sure everybody benefits, mm-hmm. even if it's as little as planting a tree in their yard. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, and yeah. I would say just more pragmatically, it's just really fun to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. And you get, like, this whole um, interview we're doing. In the Hyperloop. To, yeah. We're in the Hyperloop right yeah. now. Right. Yeah. You we're get, going you, somewhere. You get to, yeah. <laughs> we're traveling 720 yeah. miles an hour right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, We've already passed a couple of cities. Yeah. Right. We might have gone too far, but yeah. no. But we'll you get to meet all these really yeah. cool people, and yeah. I think just the discussion of creation, it, it makes people light up and you get to be exposed to ideas that maybe in your own circle, um, it would be harder to be exposed to or like these passions that people had, you get to actively engage with them and I think that's really cool. That's cool. So let's switch gears a little bit and we'll close out with some fun questions. Okay. Um, if you could connect any two cities, mm-hmm. uh, where would you like to connect? You know, even though uh, mm-hmm. transonic transportation wants to connect with freight, but if you could mm-hmm. connect any anywhere on Earth. So again, another a plug for transonic. I'm really passionate about connecting Laredo and Dallas, mm-hmm. um, mainly because being part of this team, we do all this research and understanding how that type of technology benefits our state, mm-hmm. and the need for it is just so apparent. I just can't ignore it. We have to do no. it. Um, and then for fun. I think connecting um, San Antonio all the way up to Chicago would be really neat. Wow. Ooh, that would be neat. Um, partly because just that whole route, there's just so many different, like, uh, there's so many different environments and cities mm-hmm. and cultures, and you mm-hmm. still get to connect to metropolitan areas. Uh, yeah. um, that would be really fantastic. Yeah. I, I can think, think of all really the cool. the frigid people up north yeah. going down <laughs> south. Yeah. Going down south. Yeah. Everybody that wants a little <laughs> yeah. bit of snow for like a weekend can go yeah. up north. <laughs> yeah, San Antonians can finally see snow for the first time. <laughs> yeah. Just one day of it, and that's mm-hmm. fine. <laughs> yeah. For me, I would say Monterey to San Antonio, Monterey, Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that would be great. It, I think it would be a really, I mean, 
fast and quick. Mm -hmm. wow. But it'd be nice. So is there anything mm -hmm. further that you'd like to, to share? Mm -hmm. I think I would first share that what's so great about Hyperloop is it's definitely an idea, um, a really big idea, but it's something that requires a lot of physical capital and a lot of labor. And so we've been very fortunate that through our funding phases, we've covered you know all of our um, very legal bases. And right now, as we enter into research and development, you know that's a big reason why we're going out here is that we're reaching out to people who are passionate about Hyperloop as well, who uh, want to work with us. And so we're entering our um, first seed funding phase, which is really exciting. Oh, cool. mm -hmm. super! That's amazing. Thank you so much for mm -hmm. taking time out of your busy schedule as you wait for your, your for your next airplane trip. <laughs> And um, for our viewers, um, if they want to learn more about transatlantic mm -hmm. transportation, where do they where do they go for that? So we uh, our website is transsonictransport.com. That's actually a really good spot to uh, start. Uh, we have both of our work emails on there. You can actually get in contact with us mm -hmm. if you have any questions about uh, how we want to benefit the community and anything like mm -hmm. that. Always come to us. Or just engineering questions, or just want to send us some fan mail. We always <laughs> love it. But uh, we are around. Uh, check out that website. Mm -hmm. And I would also add that all of our social media handles are Transonic Transport. And especially on LinkedIn, uh, we tend to reveal some of our goodies and some of our entrepreneurial wins on there first. So if you want to stay in our loop, you can check that out too. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks. Thank you.